great to be here today. I, I think a lot of you might be worried about Hadoop and big data. You're hearing a lot about it, and it might seem like it's a bubble, like it's a lot of hype. And I, uh, I think you need to be comfortable with this technology before you can adopt it. I think it has a very strong future ahead of it. So today I'm going to tell you a bit about where Hadoop is today and where I see it's going, both where we want it to go and how I think it can get there, and hopefully help to make you feel more comfortable adopting it so that you can start to profit from all of your data. So first, where we are today. Hadoop is known as a batch computing engine. And indeed, that's where we started with MapReduce. MapReduce is a wonderful tool. It's a simple programming metaphor that has found many applications. There are books of algorithms that are implemented, uh, how, to, how to implement a variety of algorithms on top of MapReduce. It's also very efficient. It permits you to move your com computation to your data, so you're not copying data around as you're processing it. It also forms a shared platform. Building a distributed system is a complicated process, not something you can do overnight. So we don't want to have to re-implement it again and again. And MapReduce has proven a solid foundation. And we've seen the development of many tools on top of it, such as Pig and Hive. But of course, this platform is not just for batch computing. It's a much more general platform, I believe. So let's take a minute to think about what the, the true themes of this platform are. Primary among them, I, I think, is, store, is scalability. A big component of scalability that we don't hear a lot talked about is affordability. We run on commodity hardware because it allows you to scale further. If you can buy 10 times the amount of storage per dollar, then you can do 10 times the amount of, of, of you can store 10 times the amount of data per dollar. So affordability is key, and that's why we use commodity hardware, because it is the most affordable platform. Similarly, open source software is very affordable. The core platform that folks develop their applications against is free. You may pay vendors, but you pay vendors for the value they deliver. You don't keep paying them year after year, even though you're not getting anything fundamentally new from them. The vendors need to earn your trust and earn your confidence by providing you with value over time. Some other elements of the Hadoop stack uh, are more matters of style. It's this notion that you don't need to constrain your data with a strict schema at the time you load it. Rather, you can afford to save your data in a raw form, and then as you use it, project it to various schemas. Call this schema on read. Another popular theme uh, in the big data space is that oftentimes, simply having more data is a better way to understand your problem than to have a more clever algorithm. So it's often better to spend more time gathering data than to tune your, your fine-tune an algorithm on a smaller data set. Uh, intuitively, uh, this is much like having a higher resolution image. Um, if you're going to try to analyze it, you'd rather zoom in on the high-resolution image than the low-resolution image. So if big data is not just batch computing, what is it? What are the themes uh, that uh, dominate this? I, I think I've already covered those. Um, and we've long had uh, one non-batch component in HBase. You just heard a fair amount about HBase in the previous talk. Um, what I want to draw your attention to uh, is what I think is the secret of HBase's success. 
HBase obviously is an online computing system, not a batch computing system. Uh, performs interactive puts and gets of individual values. But it also supports batch. It shares storage with HGFS and with every other component of the stack. And I think that's really what's led to its popularity, is that it's integrated into the rest of the system. It's not a separate system on the side that you need to move data in and out of. It can share other aspects of the stack. It can share secu security, uh, availability, um, disaster recovery. Uh, there, there's a lot of room to um, permit folks to better use, to, to only have one copy of their data um, and only one installation uh, of this technology stack. So if we're not batch, what do we want to be? What, what do we really aspire for in this platform beyond HBase? I think there's a number of things we'd like to see uh, in the, the sort of holy grail big data system. Of course, we'd like it to be open source, running on commodity hardware. We also want to see linear scaling. If you need to store 10 times the data, you'd like to be able to just buy 10 times the hardware and have that work automatically, no matter how big your data set gets. Similarly with performance. For both batch performance, if you need greater batch throughput or short, smaller batch latency, you'd like to increase the amount of hardware. As for interactive queries, the same thing holds. Um, increased hardware should give you linear scalability in both performance and magnitude of, of data process. There's other things we'd like to see. We'd like to see complex transactions, joins. It's a lot of, lot of technologies which this platform has lacked. And I think, classically, folks have believed that they weren't ever going to be present in this platform, uh, that when you adopted a big data strategy, you were giving up certain things. I don't think that's the case. I think there's very little that we're going to need to give up in the long term. Um, why? Google has given us a map. We know where we're going. They started out publishing their GFS and MapReduce papers, uh, which we quick, quickly cloned in the Hadoop project. Through the years, Google has produced a, su a succession of publications uh, that have, in many ways, inspired the open source stack. The Sawzall system was a precursor to Pig and Hive. Bigtable directly inspired HBase, and so on. And I was very excited to see this year Google publish a paper called Spanner about a system that implements transactions in a distributed system, multi-table transactions running on a database at a global scale. This is something that I think a lot of us didn't think we'd see anytime soon. Uh, and it really helps us to see that, that the sky is the limit for this platform. Um, Spanner wasn't a simple project. Don't expect to see it, you know, next spring in Hadoop, uh, this, this kind of technology. But it gives us a direction. It gives us a map of how we might get to this, this holy grail. Uh, and gives us the confidence that this platform can get there. So, back to where we are now. Yesterday, uh, Cloudera announced Impala, which is a huge step down this path towards the Holy Grail. Now, no longer can you just do online puts and gets of values. You can do online queries interactively with Impala. Impala falls out of some work from Google uh, again uh, that was published a few years ago. Uh, and it's very exciting. It's a, it's a fundamental new capability in this platform uh, that I think is a, a tremendously valuable step on its own, will help you build more and better applications on this platform, but also I think it helps to make this point that this platform isn't a niche. 
it isn't a, a one-point technology. It's a general-purpose platform. We, we know where we're going with it. And moreover, we know how to get there in many cases. So I encourage you to be comfortable adopting it now and know that you can expect more in it tomorrow. We're going to keep this thing advancing. Thank you very much.